Good morning. It's Friday the 16th of October and it's time for Boris's Best of British Bulletin with me, Davy PhD. You know, the thing I regret most about these bulletins is the actual events that inspire them. It's scarcely believable that all of this bellendery is happening every fucking week. Anyway, grab a pint of laudanum, hide any sharp objects and let's roll. I'm sure we all remember in March and April the weekly clap for the NHS, how at the beginning of this pandemic they were lauded as the nation's heroes, but for some strange reason the government said no was not the time to give them a well-deserved pay rise. Well, fast forward to October, with many NHS staff still scraping by in the breadline and feeding their kids from food banks, the UK government, in a move which surprised absolutely no one, decided that now was the time to give themselves a £3,000 plus pay rise. Yes, our brave government have been working hard, awarding their mates' companies' contracts without due diligence, appointing incompetent life peers to make an arse out of test entries, and generally not helping much at all. How fair and equitable. A few days ago, Boris Johnson excitingly announced that new hospitals he'd excitingly announced only last year, and then he arbitrarily upped the number from 40 to 48. Because, well, why not? To show how serious he is, he allocated a budget that will pay for slightly fewer than two hospitals. I don't want to put any doubt in your mind, folks, but he promised us a garden bridge, an airport on a floating island in the Thames, a bridge to Northern Ireland, and, of course, a great Brexit deal. Anyway, he then promised to turn Britain into a new Jerusalem, which sounds lovely. Until you consider that the actual Jerusalem is one of the most violent and divided places on earth. Pledging to unify the nation, he decried lawyers as lefty do-gooders, hot on the cloven heels of Pretty Patel. And now on to Led by the Science News. Back in May, only 47 days after South Korea introduced mandatory quarantine and free tests with 24-hour results, the government introduced a quarantine scheme for people arriving at UK airports. But they made it voluntary. And then they paused it. And then they reintroduced it but made it shorter. And then they added fines. But they didn't tell anybody to police the system. And then they said it was all under review. And now they're talking about maybe announcing something new in November. But in the meantime, a man operating under the name Grant Sharps floated the idea that passengers should have to pay for their own tests. Because nothing says that you're serious about public health. Like an eight-month delay before shrugging your shoulders and saying, No, oh, you didn't do it yourself. But first, because you wouldn't want to rush things a mere 253 days after the first UK case and after a barely worth mentioning 40,000 deaths, the government is considering maybe setting up a task force to think about quarantine and testing at airports. In charge of this quest for the truth is Matt Hancock, a forlorn weeble who this week refused three times to tell Parliament whether Serco are still being paid for all the tests they lost last week. Which means they definitely are. Matt Hancock bought one million antibody tests, which the Department for Evaluating Tests said cannot be trusted. He's already blown £30 million in antibody tests, which were not fit for purpose. He learns from his mistakes, and that's why he's now making much more impressive, and crucially, much more expensive mistakes. Rishi Sunak said the jobs of all actors were not viable, and they should find a new career, using the government's shiny new careers website. Almost every person who uses this site is advised to become an actor. It's the first recommendation in almost every case. Honestly. On arts, the government were really caught out this week with a promotion to encourage people in the arts sector to retrain in IT. Probably data entry for Serco to help make an arse of contact tracing under the astute idiocy of Baroness Dido fucking Harding. Now, the campaign features an image of a ballerina in her studio. She's called Fatima, and she's been encouraged to give up her dream of dancing for a living to become an anonymous data entry technician. Watch this. And so it starts. We see the ballerina Fatima there, lacing up her shoes, and being encouraged to stop being a ballet dancer and become an anonymous data entry technician for Circo. 
Of course, as you can imagine, the internet was not kind to the government. There we go. Douglas Ross could be Nicholas T-Boy. He just doesn't know it yet. Nigel could work with his friend Tim at Witherspoons. Oh, wouldn't that be a nice combination? And, of course, who wouldn't want to see Boris leading an opposition party? For however short a time it was. Or Dominic working in Specsavers. Perhaps the non-existent branch at Barnard Castle. Oh, dear. Michael Gove working at Pret. Well, you deserve that for wearing pink Burberry, you tool. And, of course, Matt's next job could be organising a piss-up in a brewery. He just doesn't know how to yet. Oh dear, highly amusing. Pretty would make an awesome Disney villain, Cruella de Vil Mark II. And Rishi would make an excellent baggage handler. He just doesn't know it yet. And they keep on coming. A little bit of light humour there, Mrs Doyle could be working in cyber. And of course, Father Dougal gets his dream job in the milk flute. Uh, back to the serious business of bol- politics, perhaps Boris's next job could be in refrigeration. He is fond of a fridge. Oh, Dido's next job should not be in cyber or healthcare, but it probably fucking will. Ah, Douglas's next job. Maybe a chocolate fire guard? Hmm, yes. And of course Matt Hancock would always make a great wet flannel. But, of course, Rishi would make an excellent waiter at Wagamama. He just doesn't know it yet. And, of course, Boris's job could be anywhere else, as long as it was never PM. But perhaps the best retraining opportunity is to retrain as a Tory. All you need is a sense of entitlement, zero personality and unaccountability. This is just... A little bit of the dedication that Fatima needs to become a ballet dancer that's been totally and utterly belittled by this thoughtless campaign. In typical UK government fashion, this ill-conceived and ill-executed campaign stole the photo and used it without the photographer and the model's permission. She's not called Fatima at all. The campaign also ignores the fact that loads of people employed in the arts like copywriters, graphic designers, photographers, lighting techs, makeup artists, hairdressers and of course ad agencies are needed to put together this campaign encouraging people to leave the arts. And just for a bit of context, the UK arts sector generates over £23 billion a year and employs 370,000 people. The UK fishing sector generates under £1.4 billion a year and employs 24,000 people. Now guess which one of these Rishi Sunak, the man in charge of the budget, says is viable. But some sound decisions are still being made. A company run by an associate of a Tory peer got a £122 million contract to provide PPE only seven weeks after the business was founded. With no competitive tendering and thus far no PPE delivered. 250,000 businesses not closely aligned with leading Tories can't access the loans the government promised. But because the government didn't track the loans it did give out, it's unlikely we'll be able to be repaid for a few of them. Well, I see a few. £26 billion. Pounds. Pennies, really. Fraser Nelson, editor of the Tory cheerleader The Spectator, said... Around the world, no government has been judged to do a worse job by its people, and no country has created as much debt. No matter how you look at it, we're pretty much the worst in the developed world. And the head of the UK Covid Task Force said that even if we develop a vaccine, somehow manage to order it correctly and get it delivered to the right addresses, vaccinating all of the UK is not going to happen. Which is a funny way to issue a few thousand death warrants. Anyway, we've giggled enough at the dead. Let's move on to the homeless. Official analysis of a government house building plan shows it would cut affordable housing by 47%. Robert Jenrick defended this policy on the remarkable grounds that he was on a moral mission. And so on to Brexit and Tory MP Tom Tugendhat, who voted to build 
border checkpoints in Kent and voted to build a 27 acre lorry park in Kent and voted to build infrastructure to cope with 70 mile traffic jams in Kent then called on the government this week to stop all this fucking building in Kent. Feral pipe cleaner Michael Gove said things are still looking very positive and that he thinks now the UK has a 66 chance of what he once called the easiest deal in history. However, the lead EU negotiator said it is difficult to feel optimistic about a deal. Boris Johnson, who has spent the last four years telling us the Human Rights Act is a terrible thing that Brexit will finally free us from, has been forced to promise the EU that he won't rip up the Human Rights Act because we desperately need a trade deal. Sadly, he also promised he'd stick to the withdrawal agreement and didn't. So the EU said the UK deciding to break international law calls into question trust in future promises and negotiations, which absolutely nobody saw coming ever, except for everybody. With the deadline for a deal expiring today, the UK chief negotiator wants to amend state aid rules, but he's admitted no extensive text on state aid rules will be admitted by the UK. So we want the EU to scrap its rules, then replace them with a set of vague, airy concepts that we can't even put into words ourselves. Four years after we voted for this shit show, and a mere 27 years after the campaign to leave the European Union began. But finally, some great news about Brexit. Daniel Kaczynski, top Tory bullshit hoover and graduate of the shaggy school of denialism, proudly announced he'd been appointed as trade envoy to Mongolia. So we are saved. Folks, thanks for watching. Please remember this is satire. It is all based on verifiable facts, but it is satire nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed the video. Likes are good, so click that like button. But if you know any unionists, please share it with them. They need to see how tragic their life choices are. Enjoy. Davey PhD.